The last module was a little dry when it came to lab testing. This module has a few more variations, which is a good thing. As many of these microbes have similar presentations, it's more important to be able to differentiate specific bacterial genus for treatment purposes. Let's start with Salmonella. It can be tested for in a variety of manners, including many types of body fluids. The Weidel test, or agglutination test, was a classic question regarding this microbe and test for antibodies or antigen. This causes clumping in a test tube, as seen in the image. The TSI slant is a specialized auger medium, but is positive in a few enteric bugs, so its usefulness varies. Often, patients recover before results for these tests come back, but severe infections might require more specialized options. Though most of the fermenting questions are not particularly high yield for medicine, they are more so for enteric microbes. The common sugars that we may test for are glucose, lactose, sucrose, and mannose, along with a few others. Salmonella also possesses the H antigen and K antigen, as well as produces hydrogen sulfide from sugar fermentation, which is seen on TSI testing. E. coli is usually not too difficult to culture. However, with so many gram-negative rods that cause human disease, simply looking under the microscope isn't going to be enough to differentiate this from dozens of other bugs. The McConkie agar is a specialized agar for lactose-fermenting bacteria. As shown in this image, E. coli is growing at the bottom section of this plate. What is less clear is that Proteus and Shigella were also cultured and do not show on this medium. E. coli's virotoxin virulence factor is the cause of HUS in this infection. It is called Shiga-like toxin for its commonalities with Shigella. We also discussed how another organism increases the activity of G protein via ADP ribosylation. Which microbe does E. coli share this characteristic with? Though it has many other non-specific characteristics, test questions frequently bring up the aspect of its toxin's temperature sensitivity. Recommendations to properly cook food helps to prevent disease from this and other microbes. We discussed some bacteriosins in the first module, and that bacteria create these to kill off competing microbes. E. coli's special brand is called colicin. Shigella is one that is easily mixed up with other enteric bugs. It has the positive TSI test like Salmonella, as well as slight agglutination testing. The hectoin agar is the differentiating factor. This medium was actually developed for the purpose of differentiating between these two microbes. Salmonella produces hydrogen sulfide, which turns the medium black. Shigella, which does not, turns it green. Of course, the shigatoxin has been covered and its virulence factor is associated with HUS. Shigella often uses the four F's mnemonic for its most likely causes. Food, fingers, feces, and flies. This is also somewhat different than the meat-specific foods we see in Salmonella, though there is some overlap, as it also has a very low infectious dose compared to many other microbes. It only takes a few individual bacteria to colonize a host. When it comes to Yersinia, it is not as frequently tested for microbe. Why Enterocolitica can be detected in stool and even blood and other fluids, but is usually self-limited and diagnostic testing is unnecessary. Yersiniosis that presents with swollen lymph nodes or respiratory sequelae are more concerning for Y. pestis. A needle aspirate of a bubo can be cultured, and more accurate testing methods are more readily available as well. But this is an unlikely test question for medical exams. There's actually a vaccine for Yersinia pestis, but with the low incidence rate of this disease, it is difficult to know how much protection this actually offers to contemporary strains. It can be described as safety pin or bipolar when seen through the microscope. It also likes to grow in the cold, which is in opposition to Campylobacter. Oddly, due to this bug's love of iron, those with hemochromatosis are more susceptible to infections. For Klebsiella, respiratory infections are often first hinted at by a patient's presentation that leads to a chest x-ray. To distinguish between different respiratory pathogens, a sputum culture can be attained to help with the diagnosis. Urease positivity is one of the unique features that can distinguish this on a test question from most respiratory microbes, with the exception of possibly Pseudomonas. Genital lesions are usually diagnosed by clinical presentation alone. Remember the current jelly sputum descriptor for this on test questions. 
A particular demographic in which it is more common would be those prone to aspiration, such as those that are weak or unconscious. Also, as this is one of the three common McConkie agar bugs, if that is mentioned in a question, it should be a great clue. And lastly for this tier, the miscellaneous section. Let's reinforce that Proteus is urease positive. What are the other bacteria in the punch mnemonic for urease positivity? What is the name of the microbe's kidney stone? It also produces hydrogen sulfide. Which two microbes did we just discuss in which this factor helps to distinguish between? Enterobacter has a special medium, though it's so low yield it's almost not worth mentioning. As it ferments many sugars, this also usually doesn't help to differentiate as well as a single fermenter. Serratia is most notable for its red appearance on culture. This is from a pigment that it expels, called prodigiosin. Bacterioides is an ABC anaerobe that is found as normal flora in the gut. Because of some of the enzymes it possesses, when it is displaced into other tissues, it can begin to wreak havoc. Citrobacter is pretty low yield as well, and it can also ferment lactose. But really just remember everything here causes UTI. Hopefully that wasn't too brutal. There were a fair amount of new tests in this module. They are mainly needed when distinguishing between other bugs in this family, but can sometimes help with those outside of the module as well. The patient's history and presentation is always the first place to start. Then you need to think of what the next best test will be in order to diagnose the correct pathogen. We'll cover treatment and DDX in the next tier. Are you an educator or a student with an interest in creating educational content? Would you like some tips and tricks to improve on the educational material you're working on? Please contact us via the website contact form or social media to inquire about free instructional design advice. We're also open to discussing hosting your material and working together to build a platform for the future of medical education.